In this video, I'll show you how to create a document from a template, launch an approval workflow on it, and then use DocuSign to secure the necessary signatures for it. I'll begin in this folder here, which I've configured to be associated with a template for a master services agreement. If I right-click anywhere in the open space in this folder, it will bring up the contextual menu, from which I'll select New and then Document. Doing this opens the New Document Profile window. As you can see, the MSA template has already been selected by default, as well as the auto name rule to be used in this folder, and the desired profile for this type of document. Filling out this profile serves two purposes. First, it records information that can be used to route, catalog, search for, and report on this document in the future. Secondly, the information I enter here can be used to populate the template, as you'll see in a moment. For my counterparty, I'll select Shipley Designs. My contract contact will be, appropriately enough, Ken Shipley. In my Effective, Expiration, and Contract Review Date boxes, I can either type in dates manually, or I can use the built-in calendar function to select them. For this example, I'll use the calendar function to make my effective date January 1st of 2019, and my expiration date December 31st of the same year. And to give myself a little time to work with it, I'll set the review date about a month before the expiration. I'll adjust my new document window so you can see the entire profile. You'll note that the email and full name properties for the second signer are already set as folder level defaults, so all I need to fill in are the name and email address for the first signer. So that you can see both signature steps, I'm assigning myself to both the first and second signer roles. Now I'll add some details in the optional description area here, and then I'll click OK. Doing so closes the new document window and opens the newly created document in its native application, which is Word in this case. Here is the agreement created from the template. Some of the profile values I entered, like the dates and the two signers' names and addresses, have been automatically entered into specified areas of the document. This saves the user time and ensures consistency between what's being recorded in the document profile and the contents of the document itself. Now I'm going to edit the document. Ordinarily, I'd type any specific changes into it directly, but I'll save myself a little time in this example by pasting a block of text into the document from another one that I have just off screen. A bit of legalese to pad out the agreement, but it's enough to give you the idea. Now that I'm happy with the document, I'm going to save it back into the repository. To do this, I can use the Document Locator add-in menu that is built into all of my Microsoft Office applications, or I can simply close the application. This brings up the Document Check-in window, confirming that I'm done working with the document. This check-in window has several situational functions built into it, and I'm going to use one of them right now. Because I'm done editing the document, I'm going to use this checkbox here to create a PDF version of the document as I'm saving it to the repository, and then I'll click OK. Now you can see the document in the repository. Notice that it's been automatically renamed using the rules for this folder, and that it has been converted from a Word document into a PDF. Since the document is ready to be signed, I'm going to launch my signing workflow now. To do so, I right-click on the document name and select Workflow, Workflow Request, and then pick the one I want from the drop-down list of available workflows here. In this instance, I want Multi-Signer MSA for DocuSign. Clicking OK starts the workflow. Back in the repository, the golden gear serves as a visual indicator that this document is now engaged in a workflow, and if we move our cursor over the document to bring up the hover view, we can see the full profile for the document, as well as information about the workflow currently in progress. Now I'm going to take off my document preparer hat and put on my external party document signer hat. The workflow we started a moment ago has sent me an email with a DocuSign link that will take me to the document that I'm being asked to review and sign. I'll drag my email over to this screen so that you can see it. From this email, 
Clicking the Review Document button opens a browser window containing the document in question. I'll click on the Continue button here to reveal it fully, and now I can scroll down to the bottom of the page, and by clicking on the Sign Here button, I can apply my electronic signature. Finally, I'll click Finish to save the now signed document. If I want to, I can log into my DocuSign account to review my documents, but in the interest of keeping this short, I'll click No Thanks to conclude my session. Inside the repository again, the workflow receives confirmation from DocuSign that the external party has signed the document, and now it prepares an email for the internal signer, letting them know that the document is ready for their signature. Accordingly, I'll now take off my external signer hat and replace it with my internal signer hat. Similar to what we just saw in my role as the other signer, I'll receive an email from DocuSign with a link to the document in question, and just like the external signer did, I'll click on the Review Document button to take me to it. As before, a browser window opens directly onto the DocuSign page, and clicking Continue reveals the document. Scrolling down, I can see the other party has already signed the document, and clicking the Sign Here button lets me do the same. Now I'll click the Finish button to save my signature. Once again, we see the signer is given the option of reviewing their documents, and again, in the interest of time, I'll ignore that and select No Thanks to conclude my session. Back again in the repository, we can see that the workflow is still in progress. In a few moments, though, DocuSign will confirm that the second signature has been obtained, at which point it will save the finished document back into the repository, and then move it from this folder into its final destination in the relevant vendors folder. Finally, the workflow will send out an email alerting both parties that the document has been finished and is available in the repository. I'll refresh my screen and you can see that the document has disappeared from this folder. Not to worry though, I'll navigate into Master Services Agreements by Customer, then to the S folder, and then into Shipley Designs where we can see the agreement in its permanent home. Notice that the workflow has automatically ended and all of the profile information about this document has been brought with it to this new folder. In addition, we now have a unique DocuSign serial number in the document profile, linking it to the DocuSign instance where the signing took place for enhanced validation and auditability. Finally, here is the email sent to the signers at the end of the workflow. The format here is the default Columbia Soft notification template and can be easily customized to be consistent with your organization's communication format standards. The email contains a link, but rather than going to the DocuSign instance, this link now goes directly to the document inside the repository, as you can see here.